Welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Phil Arno. There's an old quote that goes, into each life a little rain must fall. Maybe here in western New York we might say a little rain or snow. But no matter how you say it, the point is, nobody gets a free pass in life. Not all the time, anyway. Everyone goes through some cloudy periods, dark times. If you're human, well, that's part of life. For some of us, it's not so bad. We recoup, we move along, good things, bad things. It's all part of the mix. But for some people, the bad things can pile up. It might start early with a dysfunctional family, maybe lifelong money problems, or a poor role models. Who knows what leads to someone having a troubled life beyond the normal. The heavy drinker, the violent abuser, maybe the thief or the molester. There are all kinds of ways to be bad in this world, to do harm to your fellow human. Is there such a thing as, as just a plain old evil person? Perhaps. But I'd like to think that there is a very rare thing to be purely evil. It happens, yeah. You gotta watch out for it, yeah. But again, I think most people on this earth have that sliver of goodness that can be reached, that little bit of humanity that can surface and shine through those clouds, if only the right chance might come along. My guest in the big picture this week has had a mission, quite literally, since 1999 when he founded Saving Grace Ministries. His mission has been to reach out to those individuals that are in need of that chance. Pastor Terry King knows a little bit about dark times. He's had his own troubled journey. But emerging from the shadows, he continues each day to reach out to that bit of goodness that he believes is worth finding in all of us. So I welcome to the show Pastor King. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Phil. I'm glad to be here and you humbled by have the an, opportunity. Well, you have an interesting story and an interesting mission. Uh, tell us a little bit about Saving Grace Ministries. We, as, a, as an agency and a, and a ministry mission, we house and case manage men and women that come directly out of the state prison system. And uh, our effort is to hold them accountable, one, to their release conditions of parole, as well as uh, impart and hopefully uh, a spiritual foundation in their life that they can make healthier choices and understand what it is to be free in our community and be set free from their the demons and the other elements of life that drove them to the state prison system where they were held accountable for their criminal activity and today find themselves hopefully on a path to a better life. So in its most basic definition, this is, I guess you would call a halfway house for people who have been in the, in the, the, the prison system. And they come out and, and you give them a chance by putting them back into the population in a, in a controlled atmosphere, in a house. Right, Grace House begins as a group home. Everybody that arrives in our facility enters uh, into a 90-day commitment at which time we really work with the case managers and with the Department of Corrections and field supervision, as well as treatment providers in the region that customize a reentry plan that works well for the client. Now, many of our clients are considered high need, high risk. These are individuals that typically can't go to the city mission and um, their limited access is to where they can go because of their criminal history, mental health diagnoses, co-occurring disorders and individuals that have struggled. They've been on parole before and, and they haven't done well. Uh, and so our whole design is about holding them accountable to what society expects of them, as well as what, what their needs are, personally, individually, so that they can have some success in life and live independently and crime-free. Well, it sounds like you're taking on the biggest challenges in the system. Uh, you, you say that, that people that you take into the system, into your system, have had these chances before or they're the, the hardest cases. 
how do you choose or how, do you, how does one become part of your ministry and, and qualify for the program? We have a contractual arrangement today with the New York State Department of Corrections and a number of other state, federal, local, city contracts that help with our case management, care coordination, and other service needs for the clients. But all the clients are referred directly from parole, from the state system. And our beds are utilized for those that have the highest need, those that are homeless, those that have no other place to go, and those that have other behavioral issues that need that direct supervision. They, they need 24-hour supervision. They might be on GPS. They might have movement control. They might have to have day treatment for anger management, domestic violence, sex offenses, and a whole host of other criminal background that, that we work with that client to make sure they're compliant first with their release mandates and second that they're on a path that's really healthy for them. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're not a psychiatrist, so when you deal with uh, people who are the biggest challenges and people who have had the, the roughest background, how do you judge whether or not somebody can succeed what do you look for in somebody that tells you, now you've had a lot of experience because obviously you've been doing this for 20 years. Mm -hmm. How do you look at someone and say, you know what, this guy's got hope or I'm not really sure we can help this guy? Is, is well, that something you go through? Oh, absolutely. I think everyone comes to us with a question mark. Some have the best intention and quickly turn to criminal ways and past behaviors. Our whole design is to hold them accountable and to allow them to produce fruit in their life that's measurable um, and, and to be there to hold them accountable, good and bad. And, um, and I think one of the things that mark a, a changed life is when someone comes out having served 20, 25 years or longer and they have a sincere, humble heart. There, there isn't a drive to say I'm back and this is what I'm entitled to and this is what I'm expecting to receive from community, society. But look, I'm, I'm not sure I'm even wanted back in community. I'm not sure society even trusts me to be back in community. And um, I need to take this slow. And, and I need to learn how to live life all over again. A life that perhaps I may never have learned to live before. That's got to be really difficult. when. When, and I've, in my business, I've, I've dealt with a lot of uh, people who have had checkered background, and, and some people, especially addicts, that I, you know, uh, drug addicts, they become very, very good at deception, at putting on a face that people want to see, mm -hmm. while they're behaving in a way that's counter to the image. Is that something that you run into a lot? Oh, absolutely. And, and I think we have to carve, weed out, challenge mm -hmm. others that, uh, to rise above that behavior and, and call it for what it is. We often refer to our program design as zero tolerance. And, and I think that's why we have so much success working with law enforcement, treatment providers, the New York State Department of Corrections, Office of Mental Health, is that we're all here to help others have opportunity to advance their life and to be free. But if they're not willing to heed uh, that constructive advice, or rules of expectation, court imposed sanctions that are imposed on them for their release, then uh, they're not going to remain in community. And it's our job is to uh, identify that, report that to the local law enforcement, and that often leads to their reincarceration. Now, give us some numbers. Uh, you said to me earlier that uh, there's like 2,000 parolees, I think you said in the county, that come into per year in back into the society. And in you deal with how many? In Erie County, on an average annual return, we have 2,000 returning from the state prison system alone. Not probation, not the local county jail, but the state prison system. Saving Grace Ministries, in, in our program, we will house case manage, care coordinate, nearly 650 of that number on an annual basis. And what percentage would you classify as a successful outcome of that 600 and some per since, year? Since 2000, we've been tracking all of our outcomes. And, and I just want to go back because it was about 2000 
when we began the relationship with the New York State Department of Parole or Corrections, as it's called today, the average was 78% of our targeted population would be returned to prison within 90 days. So that was a baseline that we began to work and, and understand that individuals were not having success on parole, especially 78% would, would normally go back. Would be reincarcerated okay. within 90 days. Okay. Since, since that date, we, we can report that, that our outcome measurement suggests that 72% of every arriving client graduates program, remains in community, and transitions into some independent living that's, that's appropriate for their service needs for a year post-departure from program. So it, that's a long-term success. That's a, it's a big number. It's a, it, it's a success. And, 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 uh, and, and when I say, you know, we say independent living, not all of our clients are able to go into independent living. They struggle with mental health issues and diagnoses, uh, coupled with co-occurring disorders and and other types of PTSD and uh, behavioral um, issues that that they that what we perceive as mainstream, that's not. So our goal is to get them into an apartment if they're able, to be able to learn how to open a checking account, how to uh, work at a job, might be the first job they've ever had, or if they're unable to work get them into treatment and service and connected to their service needs where they can do banking, they can do grocery shopping, and understand when they start to decompensate where help is, where, where they can reach out for a new community of help that's not criminal, gang related, or going to lead them quickly back on a path of reincarceration. Well, um, boy, <laughs> there's so many questions I want to ask you. And this goes so quickly. I think I'm going to take a break now because we're just about out of town time for this segment. When we come back, uh, we're going to get into some specifics about how you deal with the different personalities and um, where the program goes for here, from here. And you've got a gala coming up. There's a lot of things to talk about. So we'll be right back after this. Very interesting. Stay tuned. <laughs> 